Well, good afternoon everyone from St. Louis, Missouri. However, the aircraft you see on the screen is not in St. Louis. Uh, sitting over in Greece, a little airport called... I gotta look at it, folks. Sorry. Pull up my little cheat sheet here. Alexandros. I can do that one. Padamidis Airport, Skathos, Greece. Okay, I hope I haven't started an international incident with us in Greece over my pronunciation of things. Uh, if I did, sorry. But anyway, that's where we're sitting. It's supposedly, according to JD Drums, when I uh, uh, was looking for some flights to do, he said this is the St. Martin that we here in the States and over here on this side of the uh, Atlantic uh, fly to for our vacations also the fun arrival at St. Martin uh, and you know what it was uh, be quite honest uh, it was a unique approach I have to give it I highly recommend if you haven't tried it fire up now mind you keep this in mind there's a 5,000 foot runway here a little over I think it's 5,400 feet uh, do the math if you're in the meters world um, so Keep that in the back of your mind. You're going to be running out of runway real quick, so make sure everything's to the numbers. Um, but yeah, it's a great approach. Uh, and try to fly it during the day if it's your first time. Don't try like we're going to. Was supposed to be a daylight uh, takeoff, but the uh, sun has now set, which means we're going to be doing both a night takeoff and night landing. Familiar, I am more with Rome. Not the X-Plane version of it, but the Microsoft FSX version and backwards towards 2000. Um, but nonetheless, we're going to have a good flight, even though it's at night. So, looking here at the screen, pretty much everything is done. And uh, I did that kind of intentionally so we could get rolling here as quickly as possible. The only thing I haven't done is set the flight plan which I'm doing right now whoops wrong program and we're gonna do a quick down and dirty uh, pre-brief so you all get an idea of what we're flying and then uh, we're gonna blast off out of here for all I know there's a curfew out of here so okay well we got to change that to uh, let's go with 17 25. Um, and that all looks good. We'll just file that. All right, so we are filing to come up on VATSIM. And connect. And today we're in the A320 connect. And by saying connect, that now means, folks, you can find us on the uh, servers there with, uh, oh, Adriaticus. I don't think I'm going to be in them. We'll have to see. And file. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll go J. Flight plans filed. Okay. I think we're south of Adriatic. Not 100% sure. Looks like we are, so hard to tell on this map. But anyway, um, very actually hard to tell. Let's see if, uh, let's try one other one here. This to Batastic. They seem to be a little more forthcoming in showing you the centers. Yeah, we are, oh, we are going to Barely go through one, so I doubt we'll have to talk to them. But if we do, we do. All right, so why don't we get into the aircraft first here? So again, we are sitting, if you're following along and would like to fly with Mike, gate three. Oh, sorry, correction, stand three. Uh, we don't have gates here, folks. We are just unloading via the good old staircases. So... Let's uh, hop in, he says cautiously as the system, there it went, and let's get Sim Toolkit alive. 
and I'm going to just resize it for this because we've already done a lot of checks so that'll give us that ability now sim toolkit again folks is a free program a free program is the best program for flight simulators um, for flight simmers I should say so my wife is having troubles the TV monitor has decided it doesn't want to play nice and be the second monitor for her laptop and I don't know how to help her so um, anyway uh, so any ideas out there we've tried power down we've tried unplug replug both ends um, and still will not cast over was momentarily but then it died so I don't know if it's just an old piece of crap monitor TV it's actually an old TV uh, that had an HDMI port or what but uh, it's being a, a royal pain in the you know where so but anyway let's get back here get this pre-briefed and get our butts airborne because we're 22 minutes from the time we need to push back okay so as you can see here the little blue airplane is us I'm pulling it up so I can see and be a better tour guide here um, and you can see the route now this area over here where you see the little rectangle hook back that's actually our arrival painted on so now the center that's up Adriatic I believe is this little sliver right here that will fly through so we may or may not have to contact them we'll see depends how bored the uh, controller is so you can see fair weather uh, abounds so that's not going to be a problem today loadout for today 145 peeps now reason we're so low remember I told you it's a 5500 foot runway for all intrinsic purposes over here on the side it'll tell you 5341 feet that folks means there's gonna have to be constraints on it for these aircraft to take off um, and they're the perf the performance limits basically if I lose an engine on takeoff I have to be able to land more than likely at the airport I took off let's just say during the takeoff roll boom there goes an engine now, if it's below V1, I theoretically should be able to stop. And at this runway, if I can't, I go off into the, uh, whatever the C is, the uh, G and C behind me. Um, it's not very far. However, if I get above V1, we commit to go. And then we try to bring it around and land. So we have to be able to do two things be able to one fly on one engine and be able to land and when you're in high humidity summer high temperatures all of that comes in to make life in an airplane rough uh those of you that uh enjoy the late vegas flights be it allegiant be it southwest be it american pick your airline here in the u.s that is because the density altitude at las vegas is way up there in the summer not only is it 115 at the ground there but the ground is 2500 feet above sea level granted dry no humidity in it but that all plays on an aircraft's performance to be able to come back to the airport so they set a weight limit and that's what we had to meet here it was 64,000 kilos I know it's a few couple of hundred pounds more so you got to stay under that to meet that requirement and that is why our takeoff or ramp weight is right at 63,439 remember I said 64,000 kilos so we're right under it um, and that includes fuel folks that's not zero fuel weight maximum zero fuel weight just for your those curious is uh, 62,500 so that wasn't it you had to be total weight of the aircraft under 64,000. Now, with that, we have 55,022 for our zero fuel weight. 
put on the 12,180 plus the 8,417 kilos. That brings us up to that ramp weight and eventual takeoff weight that we have to keep under. So that's why there's only 145 people. Otherwise, we'd load her up. So. A lot of information, kind of fast thrown at you. Any questions, please put them in there. Any better explanation? Boy, I'd love to hear it. Because I'm one of those that endures late. When Vegas flights at, at our airport, Mid-America Airport here in St. Louis, run in here at night, because they're taking off two hours earlier, and it's 3 o'clock there at 115 or 100-something degrees, plus the congestion, plus everything else that comes with a major airport. Yeah, puts them in late, and then if they break, then we have to deal with that, too. But that's life of an airline, of an airport, folks. So let's kind of move on here. So so that's why the, hundred, the lower passenger loads. Now, some airlines may say, and put the kibosh on that performance limit. I don't know if that's true or not. But sometimes it seems like it from the perspective of the person looking out. Why did that airline get out and you couldn't? You know what I'm saying. So, who knows? So, uh, the flight plan. Cost index is 43 for this flight. We saw that on the load sheet. Here's our average winds. And it's about 740 miles over there. We're looking at about an hour. And uh, where'd it go? I got it up here. Hour and 45 minutes to uh, Rome. So hopefully um, we should be able to do that. Now, as you're seeing here, the flight plan says we're going to climb to 36,000 and then at Gokel come down to 30,000. I'm really not, and I think I'm filed my flight plan too. So let me get in here and modify that real quick. So ATC doesn't go, hey, you're supposed to be descending now. No, I'm not. I don't want to. Okay. And file that. There we go. All right, so there's our flight plan, folks. Uh, in a nutshell, let's get rid of that portion of it as well. And switch gears so you all can see what's flying in the region we are. Adriatic is pretty much all of these right here. So there's our little sliver we go through. Okay, and not a lot of traffic. We're starting to get into the latter part of the evenings there, hence you can see it's dark. Um, we are real time. We're not, we were plan thinking about it, but we didn't. So, and then you can see the run. Got a couple planes around Rome, couple along the way. The green ones are VATSIM, the blue ones are SIM Toolkit. So, folks, it is a well done program, SIM Toolkit. A lot of features to it if you own um, Active Sky, you can marry the weather from that to SIM Toolkit. NavGraph, you can hook your program into it, so it's all in one place. You can see traffic from VATSIM, IVO, POSCON, FS Cloud, Pilot's Edge. So they've really stepped up, given us a great product, and folks, take advantage. It's free. You don't get much of, you don't see free very often in the flight sim world with this sophistication. And uh, we simmers do not get paid, you, that I know of, to, to talk about them. They just are a phenomenal product. So, um, at least this simmer isn't getting paid, so. All right, so with that, sim toolkit's going away. Let's uh, bring you up to date on what all we've done. And it's going to be a quick down and dirty. Um, 
because we're going to get ready. We're getting the last passengers on board, getting the logbook signed by maintenance. They had a little item they wanted to get signed off. Once they clear us, we're out of here, and that should be in about 10 minutes. All right, so we've uh, we started. On, well, we still have it hooked up. We're just not on it, the ground power. We checked our uh, preliminary checks, which is our thrust levers, our uh, speed brake, made sure it wasn't uh, armed or showing up. Made sure they were down. Flaps are zero and zero. And uh, the batteries were turned on, the uh, external power established. And then we went into loading the plane into the system's computers, as well as uh, getting the APU started. Then we went through our overhead checks and our main panel checks, got our McDo all set up. Folks, uh, like I said, we are ready to go. Q&H as of last checked. Let me uh, make sure we're automatically cycling that for the next few minutes. No, we were not. And we're on the wrong airport, so I'm glad we were not. LGSK. And while we're at it, LIRF. And again, folks, you're welcome to join us here on VATSIM. Uh, more the merrier. And one last thing here. Where am I? Right there. Okay. Just love getting all these little things uh, set up here on the fly. Save. Okay. Let's get that turned on. Oop. All right, so we got everything turned on. Well, heck, we'll go ahead and turn on that because we're ready to push. All right, so we got the last of the peeps loaded up. We're going to head over here, do a quick look at our EFB, and go from there. So right now, before I do anything on here, let me make sure we are on it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead, remove the external power. Fuel truck's already been removed. We got our eight, uh, 8,418 kilos boarded. 145 peeps boarded in our cargo. We had zero today. All right, so for the packs, we're going to remove the staircases. Again, folks, as you can see on the on this here, we do have a seat or two available. Feel free to fly aboard a bus. Don't have to be scared like the Boeing guys there at uh, the airport I work at. Get on a bus, enjoy the ride. Hey, it's anywhere but St. Louis. But hey, um, let's get up here. All right, so we are at that point where we're ready to push and start. Let's do a quick look outside the plane. Now, one thing about this, this is default, folks. Ooh, some serious, kind of like uh, La, uh, yeah, La Palma, I believe it's called. But by the way, where the volcano prayers are going out for y'all. Man, that looks unreal there. That wall of lava coming down the hill. So, um, yeah. All right, but you can see massive it just grades all over the place it's unreal folks it was hard to taxi in fun don't get me wrong i love this approach this will see us again um but just <laughs> this is incredible and if i do keep coming back i'll see if i can find a scenery that flattens a lot of this out um but yeah quite interesting to say the least uh but anyway we got everything closed up just the chocks holding us and all the doors are closed. Let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and call better pushback. Hey, Captain, let me know where you want this thing. And we.
we got the guy with an attitude. All right. That's cool. All right, we'll set it right there. Great news, Captain. Your toe's coming. All right, sorry for that cough, folks. Hopefully it didn't get in your ears. While he's pulling up, let's run the final bits of the uh, pushback checklist. All doors closed. Beacons coming on. We'll also turn the wing lights on. We have the strobes in auto just in case I forget to turn them on before getting on the runway. All right, so he's pulling in. And they're all released. Okay, go back to supply. Now, if you forget the chocks, they go away with this, folks gonna go ahead and pull them. Parking brake was set. All right, looks like the doors and hatches are closed and we're ready to connect. Cleared to connect. All right, so while we wait for him to connect, we're gonna start our ACARS program for Sim Air, or Sim Air Force. How about Mac Air? Call sign for today if you're looking for me is Mac, M-A-C, 0572. You'll find me right now at LGSK. Love to fly with you, folks. Okay. Let's see who's out here. Got Hal Ryder and FTO pair. Toast connected. Bypass pens inserted. Go and kill the parking brake when you're ready to go. Welcome aboard. Hope y'all are having a great Tuesday. Uh, enjoy the ride. All right, parking brake off. Here comes the pushback. Light them up. And I'm going to wait um, till we get out of the gate area to start turning the engines over. Won't be long. Hopefully he's got us under control, man. <laughs> All right, so again, the weather over here looks good. Let's go ahead and start turning and burning the engines. Okay, let's try not burning the engines, shall we? That's a different plane. So we move the uh, engine mode to engine start, and we turn number two on. Come up here, and we can actually watch it spool up. While it's in the gray here, folks, you know the engine is actively turning. So, and then we're going to be looking for a veil up here eventually. And that's going to let us know technically we can start the other engine. Some people ask me, why do I start number one? Or number two first, sorry. Pilot's prerogative, folks, is really what it boils down to. Um, we are, you know, used to be you start the right engine, that's where the generators and all were. Well, now they got them on all engines, so you don't have to worry about that. Sorry, stewardess, we're asking, uh, what's my in-flight meal today going to be? They're making a run to McDonald's. I don't know how they're going to do this while we're flying, folks, but this ought to be an interesting acrobatic feat. Okay, I missed a veil, I'm pretty sure. Just about done here. Go ahead and set your parking brake. Okay, I'm going to make sure it sets because it has not been setting. Okay, I'm going to have to look at the key behind And here. we're disconnecting the tow. Give me just a moment. Definitely going to have to look at that key bind. All right, so now we can start up number two. Or number one, I'm sorry. Got myself even turned around. So we'll come over here. Just basically, oh, that's all you got to do, folks. Pretty tough in an Airbus. And we'll have him hold until we get the light off indication. We get fuel flowing. Okay, it's cleared to disconnect. Cleared to disconnect. All 
All right, so now we are doing a SID out of here, folks, and it's basically going to loop us to the left. I'm sorry, to the right. And we're disconnected. Over Signal the VOR. The right. Take it easy and have a safe flight. And then on our way to uh, AGH, which is actually our first fix. Okay. There goes the tug. We're going to watch for him over here with the flag, with the pin. And I missed it again. Darn it. Okay. He's holding the pin right here. We want to see that to make sure we're clear. Our nose gear is good. Which it is. Oh. I thought these two were tied together. Just put that one on the weather radar. There we go. All right, so continuing on, um, put the engine mode selector back to norm. Up on the top panel, they want us to kill the APU bleed, check our packs, one and two are on, and then the APU master goes off. Now the avail light stays on while it cools. Um, and then we'll come down here, hit the, uh, I'm going to hit the bleed. We can see the packs are on. Okay. Now that leads us to the taxi. There we go. Just getting my computers all set up here gonna move this to TA on so we need the nose light la okay brake fan max come back down here catch the weather radar to one this flight flaps to three arm the spoilers there we go. And to arm them, you'll know by the white strip. If you can notice, we're one minute early, folks. Uh, spoilers, flaps, weather, boink, boink, boink. We're good to go. Let's get on out to the runway. Lights on. definitely going to have to check that key bind at the end of the flight. And you can see, folks, no power and we're accelerating. <laughs> Welcome to this gradient here. That's why you got to make sure that's working. cross that hold line. We're going to be done with the takeoff checks. So that way all we do is get down to the end of the runway, basically spin around, and we're going to be uh, getting ready for the takeoff. There's the hold line just as we make the turn here. I think go a little further. Stand by. We're going to go... Well, we'll make the... Yeah, we better go down a little further. Let's see first if we can. And we should be able to. Now this is where primarily regional jets and turboprops will hang out. Okay, while we're doing this... Once we straighten out, we're going to check our surfaces. Do 
not like how this airfield is set up. That's my only gripe about it. Other than that, it's a really cool airport. Okay. What I'm going to do here real quick is a rudder check. Okay. And we're going to hold right here to finish things up. Okay, parking brake set. Last thing I want is this thing rolling. Okay. All right, continuing real quick, we got to do our takeoff test, which basically... All of these are checked right here. Cabin's ready. Takeoff is set and normal. Okay, so we are ready for takeoff. What we'll be doing here, folks, we are gonna, we cannot flex the takeoff here. We do not have flex information. Here is the uh, McDo. 121, 125, 130 for our speeds. Uh, we're gonna be flaps up, or flaps three, as we're already set, and Gonna set up three. You know, let me bring that up. Oh, we're going down. Okay. THS is set. All right. Uh, transponder. We're gonna switch that over to TARA, and we're also gonna go to above. Now, how do we know it's in above? You have above, so that means anything from the unit up, which is good to know on takeoff. And then when we're coming down, we want it the other way, below. Flaps are three, spoilers are armed. All right, and then we will have lights set for takeoff on the runway just to make us more visible. Last thing I want to do is set our rudder trim, make sure it's set to zero. All right. Skathos traffic, Mac Air 572, back taxiing runway one for departure. Okay, real quick, uh, run through the chart here. You can also bring that one up to where are you? Let's make that a little bigger for you. All right, so here's where we are. Now, we have to go down, spin around, and take off. Uh, departure for today. Oh, I just put us. Ah, dang it. My bad. Go back. There we go. Um, is the uh, Iveco 1 Bravo. So we're going to climb 014, bearing to SKC locator. At 2,000 feet, turn right, direct SKP VOR. So you can kind of see how that's going. Cross over, then we'll come around and hook the, or come on and intercept the 269 out to Avico, and then on course. As I read this chart, and I'm double checking, I do not see any speed restrictions on it. Or, or uh, altitude as well. Well, hang on, I just saw one. Oh, up to 6,000. So, we're gonna keep our speeds down in this initial bit until we get on 269, then we'll let her loose. Again, transition, 4,000 feet here. The airport is 54 feet with a hefty uphill on this runway. So, that is our run for today. All right, so let's pull that away. All right, folks, so here we go. Brakes off. And lights on.
And like I said, it is a neat airport, it's just zero, one. very interesting approaches. You basically fly to that VOR, folks, hang a right, basically on one, down nine, a downwind one, on this. Let me turn on this strobe, hang on here. That way, they're on. Okay. And then you come around about five, ten miles out to line up. Again, make sure you are on your altitude numbers. Make sure your speeds are ready. I would almost say, think about your landing gear for you know, try to get everything in your mind done as quickly as possible. Because folks, this is a tricky approach. In that sense, it's I don't think overall a challenge. Um, the guy that gave me... Oh, and I didn't put that stuff in. Dang it. Anyway, uh, one of the streamers out there, Black Box 711, or I think he is. Anyway, he's got a website that'll help you with some of the additional information in there. And I may put that in when we get down here. Because I forgot to. All right, so we are down at the end of the runway. One hundred remaining. Just gonna swing it to the right. Like I said, this really looks like a neat little airport to visit. Beyond that, I'm not sure. Real quick here, setting the parking brake. I am going to make that uh, adjustment real quick if I can get a system here to play nice. Okay, what I'm going to update is the thrust reduction acceleration that I forgot in my pre-flight. Thrust reduction is 1560. You can go with these default numbers, folks. He just happens to provide these additional numbers. Um, and then acceleration. If we lose the engine out. Uh, scenario I spoke of. 1,600. Alright. And again, that just takes it up to another level of realism, folks. Okay. They get all of this in the strip from when they send out for their performance data. Okay, so we close that out. Alright, so with that... Okay, so the takeoff checks are we're going to go throttle, we're going to go all the way to Togo, uh, gear up with a positive rate, and then we'll get the autopilot on pretty quick to fly this out. Uh, so here we go, folks. Landing light brake fans, max on the brakes, here we go. So 50%. Gonna let them stabilize there at about. On runway zero one. 
and I do have some down input on my stick. As we go uphill, gaining speed, there's V1. V1, rotate. Wait. V2. Easy curl. Easy. Gear up. with the autopilot. Gear up. I'm going to knock it down so we kind of get an idea of what this is going to do. Got us a thrust climb. Okay, so we're after takeoff, uh, continuing here, flaps will be bringing up to zero, we can put the spoilers back into the de-armed position. Okay, get some flaps starting to come up. And we're already above 4,000, so let's... Oops, my bad. Go into standard. And... I'm seeing if she's gonna do like Boeing jets. like it is okay cool so we got our flaps okay set to just the slats out and we are on our way folks um, not much to see when I do this Other than there's the airport, nicely lit up. Okay, come on airplane, catch up to me. Okay, we can turn the brake fans off now. And one last check, so we got we're on autopilot. Pack one and two, let's check, they are on. Throttles in CL, nose lights we're gonna leave on to 10,000 feet. Okay, we're there for the most part. 10,000. And yes, folks, that's the airport again off our nose. Being a night flight, we'll go ahead and douse the wing light pretty quick out there to let them try and sleep. As we press on to uh, Aveco and then on to AGH. And I'll get you the name of that here real quick. But uh, it is called... Well, if I look in the right place. Uh, the Akalos VOR. Okay, we are now at 300 knots. We have done the uh, transition to press, so we're in our normals and we're good to press to cruise. 
let's just keep her going as she climbs out flaps are up again spoilers are down and not armed we got 113 miles till we're at uh, top of descent I'm sorry top of climb oh got ahead of myself and I believe this multi-runway airport over here is a GH Again, folks, we're flying at night, so it hopefully will mean we'll see Rome quicker. And we don't have to, you know, we can fly it in better. Okay, turning on course. Let's set our range out to at least 40. On both. And we are on our way, folks. There you go. Should be get. Oh, I thought I turned that on. Doggone it, I did not. Oh, I think I know why. I there we go. And that'll give you an overall view of how far out we are. Hour and 30 minutes. That'll update here as we get higher. So, folks, uh, sit back, relax, enjoy the ride. We are... An hour and a half away from Rome at the current speed and altitude. That should shorten up here as we draw in closer. There's 18. Now, those of us in the States know that's when we automatically change to our barometer to standard. But we're in Europe, and those numbers vastly differ throughout each country. This flight, we're looking at 4,000 over Greece, 6,000 coming into Rome. So we'll be on the uh, star by that point. Uh, well into it, so... I think actually almost getting ready to head for the uh, uh, approach. So, AGH stands 16 miles away, and we are headed for Rome. All right, I need to find out something. This is a new center I'm seeing up here. Oh, that's over here. Okay. I do see the Aegean or the Adriatic Center still up, so uh, if we have to, we'll make the call to them. Oh, but again, like I've been telling everyone that's visiting us today, folks, I hope you're having a great Tuesday as we push closer and closer to the middle of the week. The big Marcus is hanging out there in the chat room. Hope you're having a great day. Just departed Greece for Italy. Or as one of my favorite movies said, welcome to Italy. That would be from Stripes. FTO Payer. Lily Red Wolf is out there as well. Hope y'all are enjoying the ride. With us passing 22, I am going to go ahead and drop the electronics requirement. Next up will be seatbelts at top of climb. <laughs> and 
And again, my apologies, folks, for coughing in your ears. I did not mean to. Oh, I love battling allergies. We had our first major cold front of the fall season. Push through or pushing through right now. And boy, is it playing all kinds of havoc on my sinuses. So, uh, the huge pressure change and all with it. Temperature change today. Yesterday in the upper 80s, low 90s. Today, upper 60s. So, but that's because it's cloudy, rainy, and all that good stuff and a pretty, looks like a pretty brisk wind out there. Don't know. But, uh, but the temperatures are in the 60s, maybe 70s. Let's see. 66 degrees, I'm showing. So, Europe, you have that to look forward to. Plus, a unique phenomenon in the in Atlant or the Atlantic. With it's not a unique phenomenon in the fact that there are tropical storms, but the unique phenomenon is those of you that like baseball may like this little factoid. Pete Rose is in the Atlantic. One storm named Peter, another storm named Rose. Pete Rose. <laughs> Uh, that was pretty neat. A uh, guy out of Tampa that I follow, Tropical Stuff, put that out. That was really good. And if not, Mike's weather page. If you're into the tropics, you like to see where the storms are and what they plan to do, great website he has. So I get a lot of the information that I use when I fly on them, which I haven't in a couple of years, from him. And I fly on them only on the sim, not in real world. Love to do that in the room. Don't get me wrong, I'd be terrified going into the first hurricane. My luck, major hurricane, major super hurricane. But I would still love to do it. The only downside to those long runs, I know y'all say, well, it's because it's a hurricane. No, it's flying in a hurricane that long. <laughs> I flew in one for an hour and a half, two hours from Ohio to uh, Georgia. No, yeah, to Georgia, Savannah, Georgia. Oh my gosh, that was the most excruciating headache of my life for, for that. But boy, it's a fun plane still, but man, is it loud in the cargo. with earplugs in and those what we call Mickey Mouse ears, which would be like our headsets, but they're soundproof. Oh my gosh. Folks, it was still loud. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, you could, it was just an unreal flight. But I can at least say I flew one. But uh, still would love to do a hurricane flight. Eight hours with that hum, oh my goodness, would be rough, but I think I'd find a way around it and enjoy it. So, but anyway, yes, uh, next year, uh, that is going to be one of my goals to have a Herc on here and maybe do some hurricane hunting. I may even go into some of the flight planning that I do. Now, whether the real guys do it or not, I'm pretty sure they don't, <laughs> considering they have all these positions filled by individuals who do that for a living. But, uh, I'll at least go into how I plan flights for the uh, simulator with regard to when I fly hurricanes. Because hurricanes are, you're not flying from a fixed point. Well, you're flying from a fixed point to a fixed point, but the in-between is unknown. You have an idea where it is, so you put fixes to outline it. Beyond that, though, folks, you know, you've got a weather guy on there helping to steer you and, you know, set things up in course if you have to adjust flight plans and all. So, really kind of fun, but... Yeah, I haven't done it in a couple of years. It'll be fun when I do finally put a Herc back on here, other than the one that's here. I haven't really tried flying it yet, so...
but that would, if anything, possibly be the next plane. Now, the other one I am looking at, but the price tag on it has me kind of not willing to pull the trigger yet. And that's the Felis 747-200. At 70 bucks, not sure I'm ready for that yet on the stream. Especially with all the trim issues I have with Carinado. They work out great here with Flight Factor. But for some reason, Carinado, it is rough with me in the trim. Don't believe me? Watch yesterday's stream from Meridian over to Macon County, Georgia. Oh, what a trip. Fun trip, though, flying into the Smoky Mountains, but wow. What a day with the trip. <clears throat> and then I hear uh, my friend J.D. Drums, or J. Drums. Not a trouble in the world with this trip. Ugh. That doesn't aggravate you even more. That you know it's all on you. And it's not software issue. So, out of curiosity, let's see, is Jay Drums out there hiding and lurking? Oh, he must be out trying to get that F-15 fired up. Not just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, hello, Bushi. I see you out there. I hope you're having a great Tuesday. And, uh, Hope you uh, continue to sit there and enjoy the ride. We're going over to Rome, Italy. We're cruising up through uh, 33,000, heading on up to uh, 36,000. Should be getting in range here of uh, ATC, which will be go ahead and pre program in case he does yell at me. And folks, before. People get mad at me again. Hang on a second as I set it. I don't reach out to centers. Want to talk to me? You got to reach out to me. Otherwise, I take it you're not wanting to talk to me. For instance, this is a good case in point. I'm just coming up a uh, sliver of them. Let me kind of show what I'm talking about here. Give me a second. Okay, halfway there. Oh, this one won't show. This one. There we go. Okay, well, let me, uh, uh this. All right, let's take a look here. What I'm, I'm not bringing up similar, which is where the, uh, hang on, I gotta reposition this. That looks better for y'all. Okay, so we're right here, Mac 0572. It's right here where we'll cut through. Now, if he wants me to talk to him, I'm ready to switch over and talk. Uh, if he doesn't call me, I don't call him. Pretty simple. Simple philosophy I live by, so I'm not trying to diss anyone, but if you want me to talk, you need to come up and hit me. Because I hear all these people, they're busy. Well, guess what? Put another guy in the center, or don't run center. I look at it that way. So... Okay, we're coming up on cruise, so let's do our cruise check. So that's just the way of it. It's not meant to be offensive to anyone. The people took a lot of offense to me in Stuttgart for not reaching out. Oops, there were four. Plus Munich, which I flew through. None of them reached out to me. And yet another one out there. Folks, they could have 
how am I supposed to know who to contact? That's why you should be reaching out to the pilot. Anyway, in the real world, it's a whole different thing. I'm with ATC from startup all the way through all phases of flight and to parking. So they're going to hand you off to the right frequencies. You're not doing that right now, folks. Nobody was there in Greece. So that's why. All right, so we're headed to YNN and a YNN and... Uh, but anyway, this gives you another idea. This is all the sim uh, Vatsyn. Uh, right up there, I think, is where we're headed. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we are going to press on to second star to the right, then on. Alright, so we're in cruise. Seatbelt sign. Alright. This phase. Checks are done. Seatbelts are on. Cabin temperatures checked. Let's do a quick system check while we're here. Now, what I do, come down to the middle here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this panel out because this is where we actually do it. Now, this gives you an overview of the Airbus from our engines, our fuel being used, to our oil, to our uh, vibrations. Also, the air landing elevation hasn't been set yet, or if it is, they're rounding down. Cabin pressures, temperatures, and so forth. It's really good, but we need to go through each and every one of these categories, and then some, all of these buttons here. One thing I like, that the Airbus 777 and 747 do, Others, not so much. First one I want to go to, though, is fuel. Reason being is we're going to find a pretty big disparity between the two, 25 to 23. So let's get up top and get those uh, uh, balancing as we do this. So we're going to turn the cross feed on. And then we're going to shut off the pumps coming from the left engine. What that's going to allow is the pumps from the right engine and the fuel tank level, all of that fuel is going to go through these two pumps, feed engine two, feed engine one instead of both sides. That's why the number comes down. It's not going to dump it into the other tank, just going to go into the engine. So we can come back down, and now we can do the uh, check. There we go. So we're going to check the engines. Okay, there's our fuel used so far. Oil pressure, we saw most of this on the main one. So that all looks good, everything's green. Our bleed shows us pack one and two are open. And how it gets to the, uh, uh, which one is it? To our pressurization system and conditioning system right here below it. Okay, so everything looks good here. Here's our pressure systems, making sure we're uh, pressurization system is normal. Everything's green. All our valves are green, and our pack one and two are green. Electric system just shows you how from the engine generators into the uh, electrical system of the plane, both DC and AC works, and is green. Hydraulics, same thing. Basically, three hydraulic systems, green, yellow, blue. And we just make it sure PSI is yellow. Nothing is green or nothing is red. No emergencies here. We're good. Here's our fuel again. 
So you can see we are down a little. Getting there. APU should be off, and it is. Now here's the temperatures in the cabin. So, say you have people back there saying it's cold. We can go back up here and go click, click, and that opens the valve. You can see the hot air coming in, and it's going to raise the temperature slowly here. And I'm going to go ahead and knock it down a couple up front. And it's going to kind of lower the temperature here to allow it to come down. See how the temperatures are rising, and they go pretty quick. All right, so that takes care of that. Next up are the doors. Everything's armed, slides are ready. Now, if you open from the outside, granted, pretty tough at 35,000 feet to do that from the outside, the slides will deploy on the ground. With the gears compressed, they will not deploy on you, theoretically. Always, always with an airplane, take it as theoretically. Okay, next up, wheels. Okay, in the bins, covers over, and the brakes look good. Here is our um, surfaces. And up here, you can see each one of these have a, you know, letters next to them. That's your hydraulics, folks. So, say the green system goes out, anything with the G up here, that portion of it's gone. However, bypass or a uh, uh, backup systems by using the other system power to, mainly these are the important ones you want to make sure the airplane will turn uh, go up go down y'all all of that you want to make sure folks uh, the only thing it doesn't show is what the landing gear uses let's go back it does not show there. Okay. Then we click all, and we're back to the engines. Now we'll check the status. Everything's normal. Do a recall. Clear. Puts us back. So we're now 25 in the cabin, 23 in the cockpit. They're still cold, like I might be at these times. Uh, put a blanket on. That's what my wife would say. Left the landing light on, I noticed. Okay. Oops. There we go, and all of our stuff is out. We come back down here, pull up the fuel panel. We're at 2,400, so we got about 100 more to go. And then we're going to see where we are at top of distance. Uh, we're going to begin setting up our uh, arrival. As you remember, we did not set that as of yet. And we'll go into that here and everything. So, we are just waiting for this to burn 80 uh, kilos down. Then we'll be able to turn the pumps on and let her go. So, folks, uh, the chat room is open. Uh, you're more Welcome to chat away. We'd love to hear what's on your mind, where you're from, you know, anything you want to chat about. Uh, welcome aboard those that are new in our chat area. We uh, hope you're enjoying the flight. If uh, you do want to follow Mike where he's going next, click follow. Uh, we'll get into that here shortly. Um, or, if you're so inclined to uh, support us monetarily, there's no obligation there, folks, at all. Uh, if you feel you want to give to this, you know, you've got subscribe, you've got cheers, you've got a tips thing that you can give us. You know, a tip, you know, tip not in how are you doing, but a tip as in a monetary tip. You've got a tip jar as well for the pilots, so. Folks, that's again not oblig obligatory. It's just uh, we would love anything given. We uh, deeply appreciate. Okay, and you can see we're down to 30. And we'll get this thing 
rolling here momentarily. 20. Okay, and we are just about to come into his airspace. Just as we're balancing out. So let's get up here. So we can do this rather quickly and then talk to him. I also want to go over one quirk with uh, Flight Factor, actually with every aircraft I've come across in X-Plane. I don't know if it's the same in uh, Microsoft, but there we are. We're just going to reverse, turn the pumps on first. Everything looks good, then we turn the cross feed off, and now we're pumping from uh, left side into left engine, right side in. I am going to go ahead and one more time. Just like to get them as close to balanced as possible. Go. There we go. Alright, so there we go. That'll do. Back to there we go. And let's set this up for all. Okay, couple of quirks. And I'm going to stay on this panel, and then we're going to get into setting up for the arrival. First off, to make sure you're able to talk to ATC, make sure the microphone is turned on, especially in this uh, A320. Um, in the 767, you got to turn uh, turn the speaker on and move it slightly to get it to work. Now, to make sure you come on in mode C, because some of the controllers out there lose their mind if you're not on mode C taxi. In this plane in particular, you can try everything you want down here and it won't fix it. It's this switch right here. Move it from auto. If it's in standby, take it to auto and then on. And that'll make it look like it's supposed to up there where it says mode C. Otherwise, it'll say standby. Just a couple of tips about the plane. Now, I've got it set for all traffic around me. And I'm on TARA now, which is all the way to the right. Oops. Okay. Oh, she got her monitor on. Where's the applause? <laughs> I got to get that feature in here. Um, all right. So let's take a look at the arrival at the same time while we're putting it in the FMC and looking at it here. So we're going to do this in a couple of places. So let me... size it to about there drop down just enough to get that up and that let's see oh that looks beautiful over there okay all right so here we go we're gonna go to F plan we're gonna go all the way down here to L I R F so let me bring charts up here. What I'm going to do is bring us in on the X-ray. Correction. Lat 3 Bravo. Let's first make sure no weather changes have occurred. Alright, so we're still 290 now. Winds are shifting. Okay, hang on. We may have to do... This is why, folks, I didn't set it. Alright, so...
I'm going to go ahead and stay with the tailwind approach as long as we keep it easy on us. I'm trying to think. If I go... Okay, let's bring up charts. And... Yeah, right now they're favoring the three fours and three knots. Uh, quick decision time. Uh, let's go ahead and shoot for staying with our plan. Okay, so we're going to go to LIRF. We're going to switch this to plan. Pull it back to 20. Our arrival. X-ray. Okay, so let's step through. Let me, uh, we're going to stick with how we're planned. So let's put this up here real quick. Look at it. ATIS will be 126, 125, 14 feet above sea level. Transition, I hate it when they put this by ETC. Because the next chart will tell you what it is. It makes no sense whatsoever. But anyway, it is what it is. Uh, and again, we're doing the LAT 3B arrival basically means as you read here we're going to come over lat at 250 maximum proceed to Rome ROM right up here on our chart then we're going to go from Rome Kokoba Kokoba EK Rex now at EK Rex, we're at a speed of 230 maximum. Still no altitude restrictions yet. Then we go to Ledza. And then we're up to Gip, Rip, uh, Gippa. And that is a 220 speed restriction. Matter of fact, I believe we carry that all the way around the horn. Okay, so we'll carry it all the way around to here. We're also looking on this for any signs of a discontinuity. Suvka is our initial for the ILS. That's 200 knots. Maven is 3,000. Okay, so we need to switch. And then we head to our initial at Ox ER. And that puts us right on the arrival, folks. No discontinuity. So let's put this back to plan or arc. Push it out. I'm going to push it out a couple. Back to F plan. Top of descent now 274 miles out. So basically, folks, let's go over it again. So we're going to go from Lat to Rom to right along the route here. We're going to adhere to the speed requirements. If we have to, we'll take control here. I believe it's the up arrow, but if not, use the down arrow. And then we'll control it to Suvak. And then Suvak, we head over to join the ILS. Okay, so again, the ILS, 126, 125, and the rest of the uh, uh, frequencies. This is the X approach. 
and this is set up so I can do it as a category two, three. That way in case fog rolls in and kills this approach, we're good to go still. Um, the second line is the one I more pay attention to as well as the missed approach figures. But again, remember how I told you? The arrival doesn't give you the, it's by ATC only. Just go to the uh, approach plate. 6,000s right there, folks. Boom. I mean, really? Come on, folks. I don't know why it's such a secret on the uh, arrival charts. Okay, but anyway, the localizer is IFLL 108.1. Now, this will be done automatically for us. Matter of fact, it may have. There it is. 108.1. Horse 159er. I'll match up with the chart. Now we're not going to do anything with the approach phase until we get into where we're pretty close to swinging over. Because as soon as you do and you're not under speed control here, it'll slow you to 147. It's not worth dragging in. Okay. At distance 7.8 here on the uh, localizer. We need to be at 2,500 feet or on the glide slope. If we're on the glide slope, it doesn't matter. Otherwise, we need to be at 2,500 feet to get on the glide slope. Minimums, we'll check below. Here's our missed approach. Looks like uh, seven miles out. Uh, six from OST, and I forget where OST, I think that's on, yeah, it's on the airport. Um, 2,000 feet, right turn to 185, and then out into a hold. Maximum hold speed is 185. Okay, again, here's our, uh, transition levels and what uh, special air crew and aircraft certification required. Yes for a category two. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Basically pilots cleared for ILS approach from Inter uh, from uh, EXAMA, which is on our star, to Suvok, which is right here. Strictly comply with level constraints. Ibris and Maven at 3000. Again, that's right here. Oh, Exma here. And so we got to maintain these altitudes uh, due to uh, parallel approach operations. Okay, then here's our vertical. Minimums, RVR 75, uh, DH 50, and 200 if we are, yeah. And then it's uh, RA of 98, 300, CAT 2 ILS. All right, folks, that is the charts. There you go. Adriatic never called us. That's why I don't reach out to them. I'm in just such a low portion, not a vase, nothing around me. If they want me, they can call me. Just to verify, nobody tried calling. Okay, so let's get rid of charts. I'm going to bring up one program I wasn't able to uh, on departure, and that's my top cap program. Y'all have heard this. We are 241 miles out, so I'm gonna, wait a minute. Just make it big enough for y'all to see. Okay, now this is set up for our departure. 
However, as we all know, we are now in the landing portion. So all we have to do here, folks. Now, I would go in and demonstrate the ACARs, but it won't show up properly for some reason. I don't know what I need to do, what filters and what not to have that working. So all we're going to do is update. We're showing 2506 as of 6, 1620, about two hours ago for this. Close. Uh, 25 degrees, 1019. We'll get all of that programmed in as we get much closer. Uh, we're going to be doing a full configurations, packs on. I'm going to go ahead and have the engine ice on. And I always set it up for auto lands just to be safe. Compute and boom. There we go. Reference speeds will be V-Ref. That's our landing speed, folks. 128. V-Approach. That's as we come into the ILS at that 7 mile mark that we talked about where I got to be at 2,500 feet, I'm going to start slowing us up to that, and then we'll come in. Yeah, it's a long run at 130, but, folks, it's better than trying to slow up to make the landing, especially if we have a tailwind component. Uh, landing distance we're going to need is 4,400 feet. So we'll go back to charts here and see what that equates out to in a minute. Uh... And actual distance will probably be 3,700 feet. And we should have about 9,000 feet remaining. That's as of now. When we get ready to push this information into the McDo to get our landing set up. This is where I think Airbus uh, is better than Boeing in the amount of information they want for the arrival. Boeing doesn't want all of this. Airbus does. Conversely, I think Boeing overkills the need comparatively for departure that Airbus doesn't. Again, it's kind of weird. Uh, so, but anyway, we're on our way, folks. I really, 220 to go to top of descent. So right now, 128, 133. So if I was to right now click um, approach that we saw there, we'd slow to 145. Minimum 207. We'd have to carry that all the way in. So that's why we wait till we turn it off. Okay, so we'll activate the approach phase later on. Uh, now, we saw that. I'm bringing charts up real quick here, folks. Let's take a look at the airport. So with that information, that if we do this right, we land right here, we'll have roughly 4,000 feet, so we'll be looking at Delta Echo, Delta Gulf as our exit points, but we have Delta Hotel. Heck, we can go to the end of the runway. And then we'll taxi in on Delta. Uh, the Gulf or Hotel, probably Hotel, so that way we can turn in at Sierra. And we're going to be parking, and our goal is 603, which is right here. All right, folks, so there you have it. That is our arrival brief. Our aircraft is set up for the arrival. And, uh,. All we have to do is just work our way there.
Okay, looking at our ATC situation. Looks like we got one or two there. We're just now coming in over the boot of Italy. Working our way up. And for those out in the chat room, if you have a uh, destination in mind you'd like to see us try, like I say, we fly a variety of aircraft from um, the caravan up to just have it here in a while, the 747. Um, in between that, we've got planes like the Navajo, the Citation, the Citation we're really still green with. We've got a long way to go that plane. Obviously the Airbus, the Zebo 737 is available, uh, the 767, both passenger and freighter, as well as the 747, all variants. It's the uh, free one from Sparky 43. So, but anyway, folks, we are now looking at about 38 minutes to our arrival into um, Rome. So now would be a good time to uh, head off, gra grab something to eat, and uh, we'll uh, kind of sit here for a little bit, let things digest. We're going to eat our Meal. They somehow flew in alongside of us and shuttled it through doors, my uh, in-flight meal. Uh, it's quite a unique situation. Kind of like imagine two ships at sea servicing each other. Yeah, kind of the same way, kind of not. So, we'll see you in about a hundred miles.
All right, folks, still out here. We're still inching our way in at uh, 127 miles out, just eating my in-flight meal before we begin our descent into Rome.
Okay, folks, we're back, and I do apologize for that lengthy delay. We are getting close to top of descent at about 60 to 80 miles out. Do one thing here. Okay, so let's do, like I said, that last part of setting this up, which means we go to the actual approach page, and we're going to bring Topcat back in here. And we're going to do a quick update. Yeah, the winds are right at a pretty light crosswind. So we're going to stay like we are. Okay, so Q&H 1020. As you can see, I'll show you where if you don't see it already. We're doing that right now. Calm down, computer. 2-2 <laughs> for the temp. Q&H is right here. Temperature right here. Winds right here. you got to enter it like it shows here. So it's 2-7-0. Diagonal. Not this one. This one. Zero. I do 0-3 to be safe. Uh, there. Sometimes it's not. Now they show transition of 5,000. We know it's 6,000. I know 1,000 feet really doesn't matter. Now they're calling our um, V-Ref to be 130. Virtual landings or our V landing speed, 130. We're calling it 128. We'll leave. I don't, wouldn't know how to switch that if I had to. 135 for approach, we're showing 133, so we'll go with this. All right, now with top cap, we're done. Charts, I just want you all to see where we're gonna get the information, either MDA or DH. Let's go to our approach. Usually you would get it right here. So what I am gonna do is go over here get on the right peoples here and let's look at the plain old uh, and we'll go with a uh, 214 MDA and folks we are set up there get charts out of the way and let's get ready to set up for landing okay so at my charts real quick no speed rest or landing altitude restrictions throughout the descent just speed restrictions Suvok is 4,000 so that's what we're gonna input we'll kind of watch it as we come down Earth, we're 35 miles out. Now, if ATC were on and said Mac Air 572, uh, begin your descent uh, to 4,000, we go back Mac Air 575, beginning descent to 4,000, and we would initiate the descent. Now, that doesn't mean the plane is going to go in the way I would bring it down. You're going to see a green dot here when we go into the approach. The goal is that green dot stays in between here. What that'll mean is we're on flight path that the computer projects to put us at 4,000 feet and speed wise. That's why we have constraints CSTR on. You're going to see everything that was on that chart spelled out as we go down. So actually we're not. Because we're at fifth, uh, 250 here at Lat. So it's not fully showing things. We'll see how it progresses. Okay, now, what I am going to do, though, folks, is I will start our descent up. We're going to run the descent checks. 
Okay, so we're about 20 miles out, so the Q&H perf uh, phase to approach, all set. Let's double check that our Navrad, or Brad Nav page is correct, and it is. Okay. Seatbelt sign goes on at 25,000. We've got our altitude set per star slash uh, approach plane. There were no altitude constraints, so we'll take it as that. Um, and finally, we'll start the descent with the out knob, which is right here. And I believe we click this one, sorry, the down one to go into a managed descent. Sorry about that, folks. For some reason lately, my ears have been itching. I may need to clean out my uh, headset here, so we'll do that in between flights here. We're not going to be doing any more today on streams. So, let's take a look out into the galley and see what's in the gallery for us. Uh, still got the big Marcus, Mellow Mushy, and little Lily Red Wolf. Okay. Hope y'all are enjoying the show. Uh, enjoying the stream. Top of descent here will commence here momentarily. And uh, hope your Tuesday's gone well. Be safe tonight if you're uh, enjoying any uh, happy hours. We may be the only ones with happy hours, but I got a feeling we're not the only ones. Alrighty, we are now, I believe, nine miles out. I am going to initiate our descent. I'm going to try the up arrow, but I'm guaranteeing it's going to be the bottom. Oh, I was wrong. I love being wrong. Okay, now you're going to see that green ball show up like I told you. Now it's going to show going out of the realm because we started it just a little early. But, uh, here, let's... This blue line here, pull that up. This squiggly arrow, that point when we cross it, we'll have that green ball back down in between uh, basically where 35.6 rests. Not this one, but these two. And that's a managed descent. Boeing, guys, to equate this into the language of Boeing, if you notice when you go into a descent, you get a a tree over here with a diamond going up and down. Same concept. And if memory serves, the 737 actually puts a triangle similar to ILS on here to tell you if you're on the projected glide path. Again, sorry for the cough in your all's ears. Not intended, believe me. Okay, and as you can see now, that blue dot is up here. Above it all, but it'll eventually, as we get closer and closer to this, it'll start coming back down, and we'll be right on track. See it already starting to get larger. All right, let's do a double check here. LOV, LOV, LAS, I don't see anything in our area. We'll double check though. Yeah, we are clear and free of ATC. 
Boy, it looks like a ring around Italy, though. Welcome to Italy. Alright, so let's continue on. I see say at 10,000 feet, so we'll give it a little further down. Now, <laughs> we pass that little squiggly line. You see where that green dot is now? Now, we're trying to get it back in here as it passed over it. Sorry about that. So it'll get in between here shortly. Also, our descent steepened, speed slowing, and I don't know why on that, but I look at it as long as it stays within this parameter, we're good. All right, so the descent is on. Wondering. Let me take a look at charts. That's not what I thought. Okay, I was thinking that might be our alternate, but I don't think so. Because they would be behind us. Still a little bit outside the realm, but we're on a managed descent. So we'll let the airplane continue what the airplane is doing best at. Okay, now as we look at this, you can see that way the star is going to take us around and line us up. Somewhere on this downwind leg is what we'll call it. We're going to switch into approach phase. But we'll be controlling the speed at that point. Okay, so Starting to wonder if that's Rome's airport right there. I think it is. It sure is. There's our runway layout. Okay, we're going to go ahead and drop it down to 40. And let's go ahead and. Okay. That is our arrival airport, folks. Now we just gotta fly the procedures. Technically, we should be at 2.30. I'm keeping us up because of altitude. Okay, but that is our airport, folks, and we're going to basically be parking, if I'm getting the cursor over right, right about there. This is our runway we're landing. Let's 
at 250 for now. And that's going to pull up on our descent. And I want to look at our remainder of the arrival. <laughs> out to help get us coming down a little bit. Can't see much because wing lights are on. Actually, we can turn those on. It's time to wake everyone up anyway. But you can't really see much because, yeah, there's no lights out there. Okay, and we're down to 240. We'll start steepening our approach up here. So there we go, folks. We're now in line. Let's see what it does here. Managing our speed. It should do a lot better now. Okay, and welcome aboard to everybody out there in the chat. Hope y'all are having a great day. Uh, hope your Tuesday is going well or has gone well. And, uh, Hope y'all enjoy your uh, uh, up day or Wednesday coming up. 18,000 feet. All right, so we have just crossed over the approach path for one six left. Pushing out on the approach to do the uh, downwind base back in as we continue down to 4,000 feet. See belt signs and uh, they're granted called no smoking, but it's technically now no electronics.
get this added. Alright, so there we go, approaching 14,000. Let's, uh... We are now into that downwind leg. Now I'm a little concerned, kind of seeming high. Hopefully we're going to drop here. Take a look at the chart. I wish they had altitudes. Yippa is 220 on our speed. Okay, we're going to take over. I'm a little concerned, so we're going to get down. I'd like to round that curve well under 10,000. you departed this way. That's where my mind is, that the APU would need a, would need maintenance when you arrive. And mind you, we don't have on-site maintenance. We call it in um, along that route. How would you know other than turning it on? Or is there something that tells you these things? I'm just curious. It's a lot of things that happen with the Legion that I'm always curious about. We need speed limits. I'm just curious. There's no, I'm not trying to diss gig or anything like that, any of the airline procedures. I'm just curious how they would know this. Okay. Thankfully, you know, they got word and maintenance was here. We got the plane out. All of that, you know, I know that all falls under A&P stuff. I was just kind of curious. So if y'all in the chat room or over on our Discord channel, PM, you know, send me a, a message. I don't care. I'm just curious. I'm just one of those I'm curious about. Looks like it took the better part of two years to understand why an MD-80 couldn't fly from Vegas to Mid-America on time and had to stop for fuel on the way. That took a long time for me to learn. So that's where I'm kind of going. I'm just trying to learn things, folks. Like I said, I'm not out to point fingers or anything. I'm just curious. Okay, now the chart calls us to 210.
Okay, just past transition altitude. We're gonna kinda level here, hold at 210 as we round the corners here. We're about to start kicking flaps out, folks. So, but again, it's just a question, folks. Nobody, I'm not after anyone. I'm just curious about the aircraft. In case I get check QFE. Okay, now we went into approach phase, folks. And at the end of this song, let's see. Yeah, we'll uh, call it. which is at right here folks we slow to 200 and I will put a notch of flaps out at that point okay and there's the airport off in the distance you can see it brightly lit six right one six left and we are going for one six left Again, the squiggly lines there because we're outside the parameters of the descent. Basically because me, the pilot, did not trust it. After RF-28, which is right ahead of us, we're going to slow to 200. And at 200, we can kick a notch of flaps out. We have flaps Basically, folks, the way this approach appears to be set up to me is setting up distancing and spacing for the arrival, especially since there's two hold points in type, one at Gippa, the other Suval. Suval is uh, right-hand turns for a final spacing for arrival. Miles out, let's go ahead and slow to green dot speed, which means laps one. Check. See the green dot coming down, folks. Then we're going to descend via the ILS procedure, which is Mavern at 3000, Ox ERU at uh, 2,500. Okay. Flaps one. Okay. I'm going to 4,000. Go ahead and set for three. Here is our ILS data. Localizer should be here. 
glide slope up here as we're descending for 3,000 at Bevan. Then uh, 2,500 at uh, Ox ERU, which will carry to 7.8 DME. There's our approach. And localizer is alive. Twenty-five hundred. Final check of the weather. Ten twenty. Okay, thought I was hearing thunder here, folks. Sorry. Okay, let's do our final checks. Uh, let's get a medium on here. Brake fans on. Uh, lights are on. Auto brake medium flaps. We're going to go flaps. Uh, we'll hold till we uh, establish here. And now we have the glide slope active. So. Just waiting to grab. Where'd my runway lights go? Oh, they're in the way of the the buck here. Okay. Uh Okay, we're turning in. Two thousand five hundred. On localizer. Coming up on glide slope. 2,500. Let's make sure those lights are on. They are. All right, from here. Slowing to 180. Twenty five hundred. Glide slope achieve flaps two. Probably should have waited. So I'm going to arm the speed brakes gear down. Now I'm just going to dial in. Gear down. Okay, now we're just slowing up. Laps three. Just in case. Should be flaps full. Flaps are full. Stabilized. Slowing. One thousand. One thousand. One thirty five. Happy's in sight, stable. Little drift. Let's kick it a little with the rudder.
Approaching one six left. Get a little low. Oh boy. Little tough on the left side, okay. Now we'll eat. Five hundred. Five hundred. Four hundred. Right on. Three hundred. Stay. Three hundred. Hundred above. Two hundred. Airplane. Two hundred. Middle marker. One hundred. One hundred. Fifty. Fifty. 40. 40, 30, 20, 10. Long landing, long landing, one, zero, thousand feet remaining. Okay, welcome to the realm. It's one of those landings, you know, folks, it's pretty light when you're not even sure you're on the ground and you were. Coming off the runway here. Okay, coming up to the hold line. Approaching like, three, four, center. Okay, and we're going to get on Delta. On runway one, six, center, four, thousand, four hundred remaining. Oh, I do remember those days. I forgot about there using to be another runway here. Okay. Yeah, we're going to just stay on this one, folks. Just want to bring up our checklist. Okay, nose light spoilers. Other radar to off TA. What I try to do, folks, taxi wise, the center post here between the uh, EADI and the nav display, I try to keep right on the line. Granted, it's not working very much. Okay, APU flaps open. We're going to go to start. Okay. And here we go, folks. Those light flaps, spoilers, transponder, weather, APU set. Okay, we're just basically following Delta, like I said in the brief. Remaining. All the way around the horn here and into the gates. Approaching two, five. Okay, and we're clear. 
So now we're on the ramp. Yeah, I forgot that there used to be another runway over there. Okay, and we are taxiing down pretty much the full length here of Delta to Hotel, Golf and Hotel. So, a little bit more to go. And we got all our checklists caught up. Let's get the plane presentable for the next pilots. Kind of ease down our speed here. Let's see what we can see here on the ground. Okay. And folks, we won't be re uh, rewinding this arrival at night. It's kind of hard to see what you're looking for out the wings from the tower. So uh, we're just going to let it stand as is. Again, the uh, official landing rate was uh, 62 feet a minute. So... It's like somebody's up here. I can't tell if they're in the international gates or what. So. But, you know what? We're about to find out. Okay, now our goal is to end up on hotel. Which I believe be this one. Plane. Whoa. Uh, we just took out some lighting. Could say we were doing a Sim Caesar there and getting ready to do some donuts, but not good to do on a fat Sim. Okay, and we're going to come in here at Sierra. Basically, folks, we have all our checks up to shutdown completed. Okay, coming up on 604, next one we're going to turn in on.
Okay, folks, parking brake is now set. Final checks. All right, levers idle. We're not going to open the doors or the. Uh, however, we. Uh, let's see. Chance established. Okay, let's get that bleed air going so they can feel comfortable. Okay. Jetway is on its way. Let's go up here, turn our fuel pumps off. Come down to the middle, brake fan can go off. There you have it, folks. She is in a position as soon as the uh, jetway connects. Two more switches I'd like to go ahead and kill. All right. All right, folks, welcome into Rome, Leonard da Vinci Airport, out here in Rome, the main airport. We hope you enjoyed the ride. It's been a fun one today, definitely. I am going to check a couple things. Alright folks, well, we really don't have anyone to raid the two. Black Box 7-Eleven and Spy Flight are up. Um, I'd start a raid, but with one, kind of, kind of doesn't work. So, folks, we're just going to roll out of here. But I do hope you've enjoyed the flight. It's been a pleasure and a privilege to fly with you and also a humbling experience still to see 115 people wanting to follow. Um, this channel and uh, just amazes me every time. So thank you for flying with Mike uh, and folks, one thing to leave you with as the music plays in the background. Bear with me a second. Something to keep on the uh, forefront here. John MacArthur said this uh, here recently. Satan continues his efforts to make sin less offensive. Have, or less offensive. Heaven less appealing, hell less horrific, and the gospel of Jesus Christ less urgent. Folks realize Christ always revives the church. 
in the truth. Not what Satan wants to lie us with, but in the truth. And as Jesus actually said, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Think about that, folks, as the rest of your Tuesday unfolds. We hope you all have a great day. God bless you all. And uh, we'll see you here uh, late on the day in Thursday. I have some overtime to work at the airport, but uh, we'll be flying up in Alaska with the Navajo. So look forward to seeing you all there. And uh, God bless you all. You all have a great day. And uh, we'll see you Thursday evening U.S. time. Sometime after about 23Z, just to give you a ballpark. We'll see you then.